And so if if he can, you know, if he can pull that off, and uh, uh, just looking at the numbers just now, it kind of doesn't look like he has. But right. you never really know what's going to go on with mm-hmm. um, as you go on to the night. So sure. if, so if, if if he did that, then that would be a, a really strong sign that he would be a good leader because he, you know, he can actually win a seat, win mm. votes, get people to vote for his party. Other than that, um, it's it's really hard to call. I kind of don't, you know, the the talk is that. Um, David Cunnell for David Parker, you know, the other two pretenders to the throne. But I kind of think if they were going to be good leaders, they'd be leaders already. Yeah, right. They would have, they would have decided that this yeah. year was an opportunity to, mm. yeah, sort of um, prevent disaster, take over. Instead, they've kind of kept their heads down and decided, you know, mm. um, oh, they'd, they'd bide their time and, um, sure. yeah, play it safe, which, yeah, I mean, m- maybe that shows that, good strategist or something but <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it hmm. so Daniel it's Bryce here again um, I'm just wondering it's it's, it's, it's still um, quite early to call what's going to happen in the end yeah. but um, the newspapers are going to have to start um, putting together their last minute yeah. additions what do you think they're going to do with their headlines what do you think uh, how they're going to um, you know what's the narrative going to be for the Sunday newspapers so the narrative will be around Winston Peters, I think, because it's um, he's you know catnip to the media, but also the public like to read about him. They they you know the all the the news editors know that if they put a story on their websites about Winston Peters, people click on it. So they they have that you know indication that he's he's very newsworthy. Um, I guess. Um, so he, yeah, he'd be one of the main angles, um, but also uh, yeah the. Hmm, but they will wait. Um, but they'll have a number of stories written um, by this stage, and uh, so they'll be able to make a final call quite late into the evening about uh, whether it's uh, uh, obviously, you know, a national majority government, or if, if it's um, even if it's uh, national on 49 percent, and they can govern with, you know, a united future and mm. two act MPs. Then uh, obviously, it's a centre-right government. Mm. Uh, if it's anything less, then maybe they'll they'll say it's a cliffhanger or something like that. Yeah. Okay, I, I, we're looking at I predict at the moment, okay. and the stock for uh, there being a national prime minister after this election yeah. is trading at about 97 percent. Okay, doesn't yeah, that doesn't that seem quite high? <laughs> no, no, I think that's a pretty safe bet. You yeah. think it is? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I just kind of have one more comment to make, sure. I guess, um, uh, something that I thought about when I was voting. I, I live in, like I said, I, I live in Wellington Central, and I live in Wadestown, which is um, a, a suburb that's very close to the, the kind of parliamentary end of Wellington. Mm-hmm. And um, I live in the sort of shabby, disreputable end, but to, to get to the, my voting booth, I kind of had to go into to Central Wadestown, which uh, for people who don't know it is... is um, uh, this, this hilly, leafy suburb overlooking the harbour, and it's characterised by um, spectacular uh, wooden villas with incredible views. And this, the stereotypical view of Wadestown is that it's where the the heads of the civil service, the, the sort of senior diplomats, senior treasury, um, you know, heads of the various SOEs live. Um, and as I was walking to the voting booth and looking at all these houses where these various mandarins live, it kind of occurred to me that the people that lived in these houses behind these high walls, etc., actually have a lot more power and are the government in a much more real way than about 98% of the MPs that will be voted into power tonight, especially under the national government, which is, you know, obviously it's practicing austerity measures and cutting back on the public service, but that none of those cuts come anywhere near the people that, you know, mm. live, live in these um, yeah. the Wade Sound dress circle, who actually have a lot more power because... Uh, the national government has kind of ceded quite a lot of authority to the public service. Mm. Normally when you make cuts and you're a government, you decide what programs you're going to cut. Mm. The national party says um, you have less money, go and decide what's yeah. going to happen. So these people have really been given a lot of the powers that we think that we are giving to people when we're voting today. Mm. Um, they, they have the power to decide what services we get, what services we don't, and how they're distributed through the entire country. So yeah. that's my bleak, cynical thought for the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, thank you on that upbeat note. Okay. We'll, uh, well, thank you for your time. Thank okay. you for your insights. Thanks, guys. And I look forward to reading your, um, your take on whatever happened in the next couple of days. I'll see what I can do. Yes, can't wait. Thanks, Daniel. Cheers.
So just uh, to recap, that was Daniel McLaughlin, the editor of the Dim, uh, editor, sorry, the author of the Dim Post uh, blog post, which is was a must read. A must read, and if people don't read it, it's dimpost.wordpress.co.nz. So yeah, that's right. There you go. You should do that. Um, well, we've been handed a bunch of. Uh, uh, a bunch of things that we can comment on. First of all, for the Dunedin yeah. uh, local flavour, uh, there's a projected decrease of half of Labour's majority there. So it's David nine. Clark on online to, to, to be re-elected, but with a, a sort of a half majority. It's not surprising, I don't think. Um, New guy coming in, yeah. doesn't have Pete Hodgson. Pete, Pete Hodgson's Hodgson been MP had, for a long time. He built up a big yeah. personal vote, probably. Yeah. 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 But Michael Woodhouse, who we talked to before, will be happy with that. And That's you know, right. Maybe he's right that Dunedin's no longer the true red uh, seat that we once saw. And that may well be borne up with the second message that we're getting, that National is actually leading Labour in the Dunedin South party vote. But, yeah. Which, that, well, you know, that shows Dunedin South's changing quite a lot. But That's Claire right. Curran, the local MP, looks on, uh, on to be re-elected there. Yes, mm. and but it's the majority that we'll be looking at to Quite. see if... Um, the majority will be cut, it'll be... Um, but she'll still be re-elected. But no, it's interesting that, you know, if National to outpoll Labour on the party vote in Dunedin South, that's something we haven't seen for a long, long time. Right. I don't think we've ever seen it under MMP. Probably not, no. no, no. So, um, Other ones that we've got to look at, Te Tatonga, Labour are ahead by 757, so that's Reno Terakatani uh, leading... Um, yeah, and that will be controversial. That will. Yeah. Well, that, that could be quite big because not only does it reduce the Māori Party to three, mm. it also reduces the size of any potential overhang, thus cutting the number of seats that National need, need. to actually okay. govern. So a crucial win there f- crucial um, win. for Labour perhaps. And the Mana Party, that's Hona Harawere, leading in Te Tukarau by about 500 votes, yeah. which okay. closed up. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, well, we had an opinion poll that came out during the campaign to, sh- to show it was going to be close, and since then Harawera has clearly been focused on that electric yep. race. He stopped campaigning nationally. Quite. He's forgot. He stopped campaigning for mana, essentially, and Quite. is now just campaigning mm. for that, to, yep. w- to hold that seat. Yep. Okay. Other. Okay, it looks like we've got a phone call coming through. So um, it could well be... Uh, Cl- Rohui Katani, who no. is the, uh, the Māori Party... Well, at the moment, the Māori Party MP for uh, uh, Te Tautonga. Yep. But as we said, appears to be falling behind. Uh, I'll bring up her... Whether we can get the uh, Te Tautonga right down the bottom and to the left. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Thank you very um, much. So, so at the moment, um, she's well ahead. No, 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 no. Inner Terry Katani down the bottom there. Is oh, yes. By no, no. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Um, leading by about 700, 800 significant votes. And yeah. with 60% of the um, polling booths counted. Yep. yep. Um, Interesting, sh- the Green Party still taking 1,000 votes there. That's, that's interesting. Mm, Absolutely. Okay. Um, this was always projected to be, uh, projected to be close. Uh, various polls throughout the uh, election had had them switching places, um, but the latest Marae mm. poll, as I remember, it had um, the Māori Party, uh, Rowe Katane, ahead by uh, about 10%. Mm. But the problem, of course, taking the polls in that's the... very hard. ...very to... difficult... And Te Tautonga especially is a difficult electorate to get any feel for because it's so big. I mean, we've got yeah. the entire South Island and plus Wellington yeah. and part of the Kapiti Coast. That's right. So trying so. to work out a representative sample of that area of people on the Māori yeah. roll is very difficult. Mm. And, of course, Reno Terakatane, the Terakatane name... The name means a huge amount. And there's a um, lot of uh, ties. And finally, the other thing that may have played into this is that Naitahu in particular were not happy about mm, the way in which the foreshore seabed that's right. was resolved. Um, Rowe Katane may have paid something of a price for that, but on the assumption that we're going to be getting her on the phone, hopefully she may be able to talk to us about that. But just generally, the Māori Party and the Māori seats, uh, they're... Do you think they have paid a price for being with National? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's always going to be a hard sell for them with the Māori vote because, um, you know, it traditionally is so Labour heavily, heavy. Um, they've run this line that um, they've been at the table mm-hmm. making um, the, making a difference. 
I'm not sure that that line has actually gone down that well. Okay. Um, and certainly the, the party's split apart. Hasn't sure. It? Um, so I, the big problem with the Murray party is the, the leadership, you know, yeah. as in where it's going to be after yeah. Sharples yeah. Um, and Tura, um, sorry, Tari and um, Tura yeah. um, go, because they have said they're going to yeah. um, retire at some stage in the Quite. next term. Quite. Um, and um, I'm not sure whether mm. Rahu Katane and... Um, Tudor Flavel. Yeah. yeah. Dude, flick, to flick, flick us to Tudor Flavel. Let's see how he's doing in Waimakariri. Yeah. Uh, sorry. No, no. no right. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, Wairiki. Wairiki, yeah. Okay. Um, so he is comfortably yeah, in there. Comfortably He's holding off an Sykes. There was some question as to whether she could come through, but yeah. yeah. But so. it is interesting, nonetheless, that Sykes yeah. um, is clearly at number two, yeah. um, beating the Labour yeah. well, um, candidate. And Ed Sykes is high profile, well known, and you know her views on anything are are not not hidden under a bushel, so That's she's right. obviously got quite a strong bit of support there. But on this question of the Māori Party and the um, the relationship that they've had... Ah, here we go. Maybe we can hear straight from Okay. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Otago University uh, Election Night Special, going webcast over the uh, World Wide Web. I assume we're talking to Rahui Katani. This is Rahui. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. It's lovely to have you here. Now, it's great to be there. Yeah, you always knew this was going to be a close race. Um, I did, yes. <laughs> yep. So, so uh, how's it feeling at the moment? You're a bit behind on the count. I'm, I'm very nervous. Uh, I'm still hoping that the bigger polling booths in um, Wellington and Christchurch will pull me through. Uh, so there's still hope there. I'm not giving up until the last vote is counted. Absolutely. So it is close. What do you put that down to? Well, I am very interested to see that there is a huge race back to Labour in the Māori seats. I mm -hmm. think that people have forgotten that, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, the, the politics of Labour and that they are not there for Māori. Uh, I, I, maybe it's also a, a, a fact that they don't like us being in coalition or, you know, in the yeah, arrangement sure. with National. So yeah, there are a whole lot of reasons why, I think. But, uh, yes, I'm, I'm still hopeful that... Those, vote, those bigger votes will pull us through. Yeah, I mean, as you say, they, we're only talking about 8,000 votes, and so even though a lot of the polling, like, like a large number of polling booths have come through, we've still got the big ones to come, the big urban ones. Yeah, um, exactly. Which, you know, those things can change very quickly. In terms of trying to campaign around Te Tatonga, how, how can you do it? How can you cover that area? Well, it's very hard because you've got to be on the go all of the time. And you really need to not only be visiting each of the places, but you also need to be able to get uh, your face on TV or your voice on the radio or into the media mm. in some sort of way so that you get that wide coverage. So, you know, if in a, a Māori electorate where mainstream um, news may not be as interested in you as they mm -hmm. are in mm. other parties, that is a problem, a real problem, being able to get our message to the people. So, you know, you, you have to resort to social media and the face-to-face uh, -face sort of stuff. Sure. Uh, so, you know, if, you, if your people aren't able to get access to the internet, then mm. social media isn't as effective as it perhaps could be. Mm. Um, and, of course, if you don't have access to everybody's uh, cell phone numbers, then you can't right. text them to get that out that way either. Yeah. Right. And uh, mm. yeah, it, it is a problem getting to each and every one of the uh, voters. Sure. Uh, but everyone has that problem as well. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, so I guess a level playing field for everyone in that sense. Yeah. yeah. But in terms of the message that the Māori Party was putting through this election, uh, do you think that message came through strongly enough? Well, I do have to wonder about that now that we've seen uh, the results coming in. Uh, like, it is really difficult to uh, be able to say, based on um, smaller booths and, and maybe more rural booths, uh, but, yeah, at this stage, uh, it does look like our message has not got through as much as we would like to, you know, that we have achieved and that we, there is more that we need to achieve and, and uh, we need to be there to make sure and we need to be at the table to make sure that uh, the voices of Māori are heard. Mm. Um, I would have thought that was a very clear message, uh, but it seems at this stage like people haven't heard it. In terms of that message that you do need to be at the table, 
national, I mean, we don't know what the final results are going to look like and so on, but it's on the cusp as to whether national will be able to govern either alone or even with the seat that ACT may bring with it. So the Māori Party seats do look like they're going to be you know, in play in terms of actually deciding national being able to govern. You think it's most likely that the Māori Party would try to make some arrangement with national again? I think that we, our message has always been that we want to be at the table, whoever mm. is the gov- whoever the government is, or whoever yep. can form a government. So, um, if uh, we're in a position to do that, and once we go around and speak to all of our people, once uh, our people have had their say, then we'll make that decision. Sure. You know, it really is up to them whether they want us to be there or not. Mm-hmm. OK, um, it's Bryce here, Rahui. Um, it looks like the Māori Party could be very um, important after today, um, regardless of whether Titai Tonga is, is won by the Māori Party or not, because um, it's, it's still possible the ACT might lose Epsom and um, National might not be able to form a majority without having some sort of coalition partner. To, what's your feeling at the moment about whether the Māori Party could, can work with National again? Oh, well, we have shown that we can work with them over the last three years. Uh, sometimes it's been, um, you know, there have been some things that's been really hard to swallow. But we've, um, over, when you look at, balance it up, mm. we have had a lot of gains mm. through being in the relationship with National. We would expect to um, have a lot of gains if we got into the same relationship again. And, um, in fact, you know, if the need is there, then we would expect to um, do even better this way around, this time around. Uh, of course, if um, Labour is able to come through and form a coalition with all of the other parties, mm. uh, then you know we'd have to look at, you know, if they invited us, we'd have to look at that too. Sure. In terms of your campaign, you, where are you at now? I can hear you with fun hour, I can hear your uh, children in the background there. Are you still at home? Are you? With the oh, party, no. we uh, actually um, have are staying at a marae tonight. Yes. We've had dinner and we're now watching, and the children are playing, and we'll be staying here tonight. Magic, and so you're in right through to the end until the last um, booth closes, and then I suppose thereafter too, because there still will be specials that will need counted. That's right. Traditionally, so, are there many of those in Te Tatonga? What's the numbers? Yes, there are. Yeah. There, there are quite a few that will come through as special votes because a lot of uh, the booths actually don't have Te Tatonga uh, roles there. Right. They have to do that as special. Right. So this is something that won't be over necessarily for you tonight. It'll carry on through. Which... It could do. It could do, depending on how close it is. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm hoping that those big boots will bring me through. Yeah, I suppose at the end of a long, hard campaign, the last thing you want is uh, it's stretching out for any longer. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, and it has been hard. You know, we have been everywhere. We've done everything yeah. that we can possibly yeah. think of to get attention from people and talk to them on their doorstep. So it's yeah. been a great campaign. Great. Well, thank you very much for uh, calling in with us. We do appreciate your time. Yes, thank you. And, thank you. And we'll, uh, we'll let you go back to your, to your family and to your uh, supporters and the best luck for the rest of the night. Thank you Thanks. very much. Thank you. Now, Rahui did join us um, about two weeks ago um, here in the studio. We did a vote chat with her. Um, she was a bit more confident back yep. then about winning. Yep. Um, I guess all candidates have to sure. sort of... Um, yeah, you don't exactly uh, go into it going, I don't have a chance, I'm going to lose. Yes, that's right. But um, I think it might be worth having a look at some of the clips back from then and may- maybe some others from... Because um, we had a lot of other... Um, interviewees, Bill English and so mm-hmm. forth and they said some interesting things so it might be a good chance now to go back and play some of those clips. Sure. Yep. Is they playing? But I don't know what they're Debate in New Zealand about the divisions between Pākehā and Māori society? Um, oh, well, I've got quite a different view about that. I think Labor didn't do much to uh, advance okay, well, cultural debate because they have a fundamentally patronising attitude about Māori as a block of reliable voters who depend on the welfare system and therefore uh, should support the Labor Party. And what we found is that by going into coalition um, or support arrangements with the Māori Party, uh, that that level of debate certainly with the Crown 
uh, has opened up and in a much more positive, uh, progressive way, we were actually achieving things because, as I think John Key said at the time we made the agreement, it's, re it's based on respect, not agreement. And it has actually historically been easier for the National Party to deal with Māori on a basis of equivalence. Um, in fact, in many ways, the Māori community is quite conservative. It's, it's hierarchical, it's family orientated. Uh, the whole uh, revival of Māoridom is, a, is, a, is a, in many ways a conservative event because they're trying to rebuild what they had uh, in their you know, constitutional role, but also uh, economic uh, their economic and social role. Oh, hey, I see. I'll be back in the conversation. Yeah, sure. So that was Rahui Katane, as Bryce said, uh, who's just disappeared out to do other things, uh, talking on Vote Chat, which was a. Uh, series of interviews that Bryce had with candidates leading up to the election. Uh, Rahui Katane there talking about her chances. As Bryce said, she was more upbeat, as she had to be, I guess. It really does look like it's coming down to the wire there, which is what the polls were suggesting in Te Tatonga. Um, the polls, of course, are very difficult to take in such a, an electorate, and uh, so it's going to go right down to the wire. Uh, we're now going to have a second clip from the Vote Chat series that Bryce uh, undertook earlier uh, this month with uh, Bill English, where Bill English was talking about the uh, working relationship that the National Party... Oh, sorry, first of all, we're going to Catherine Della. It's Catherine Delahunte. Okay, I apologise. Catherine Delahunte talking about the um, what her take would be if the Greens were to go into some coalition with National involving uh, ministerial places for the Green Party. So let's see what she had to say about that uh, a few uh, just recently. Yeah. So if it happened, which it sounds like you could be unhappy with, would you would you resign from Parliament if the Greens did support a National government? Yes. You'd resign from Parliament. Yes. Okay, but I mean, when you say support, gutsy. going into a formal... Well, going having a minister in government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's... that's. I mean, it, I don't think it's going to happen, so I don't think yeah, I'm going to have to ask are. myself that question. I don't see why the Greens would. OK. Because we, we're not stupid. We've seen what happened to the Māori Party, and we know... And it's happened to a number of parties. Yeah, it has. New it's Zealand happened to first, Alliance, Brown, didn't have a great Alliance, time with Labour. Right. So I don't think that those issues... And are, in the UK, the Green Party? The are Greens, they, they yeah, going to finally hit the 10 percent mark? Do you think this? Yeah, well, I think they could. I mean, they're eating away at Labor's support, deservedly, in my view. They're just doing a better job, not just on the environment, but also on economics, and they deserve, in my view, to get over 10 percent. Do you think there's any chance of um, them supporting you in government? No, because they've got their new policy where they would uh, consider a national party being put into government. Do you think that's just total rhetoric, or do you think there's well, really a chance? Well, I don't think they've actually consider it. They've just said they won't completely nix the idea, yeah. you know. <laughs> That's right. So, oh, and we do sit in the same room every month or so. So, is there any chance? Do you think? Oh, I think it's pretty minimal. I mean, the, the surprising result for all for all the politicians was this this polling that showed about two thirds of national and national and green supporters could contemplate it. Um, but it's very difficult to imagine. But, okay. You know. But, Three or four years, four years ago, it was very difficult for him to imagine national in the Maori Party. Yeah, that's right. But it's not. It's not. Um, we, we would regard it as almost zero possibility. Almost zero. Head was that it looked like. Yeah. So uh, that was Catherine Delahunte talking uh, to Bryce about her view on any potential uh, governmental relationship that involved the Greens having ministerial places. And as you can see, she said she wouldn't stand for it. She'd walk. I think that indicates to some extent the limited room for manoeuvre there is for National in this. Uh, the Greens and National are not at a position yet where they can go into some governing relationship. Their ability to work together is severely limited. Act, it looks like perhaps at most they'll bring one MP in and that's still up in the air. Uh, it looks like United Future will be back but only with Peter Dunn and the question is will he be there as an overhang seat? And then the Māori Party, they're down to, uh, it looks like at the moment, three seats, though as we saw with Rahui Katane, that's still up in the air as well. So, you know, this thing isn't over yet. National, you've got to figure, is way, way in the box seat, but the question is what sort of arrangement they're going to have and with whom uh, following after. We're now joined in the studio by um, uh, uh, the LDT's uh, man on the ground, um, Simon Cunliffe, who is going to basically just talk about 
from a print media perspective what he's been seeing, uh, from a political perspective what he thinks is happening, and what front page he's going to run on Monday morning. Though, of course, he hasn't decided that yet, he tells me. So uh, we'll, start, we'll start from locally. Uh, have you heard anything? What's your, what's your take on the ground? Well, it, it, it looks as if there has been a, a swing to, um, to national in terms mm. of party vote, mm. um, which is interesting, although uh, it probably replicates what's happening nationally. Yeah, sure. So um, in some ways, that shouldn't be a, a great surprise. Mm. Um, you'd expect in some ways, even though the Dunedin electorates are mm. very strong Labour um, mm. strongholds, uh, you mm. would expect that there would be a degree of that swing um, uh, coming through across the country. So, yeah, not not too surprised yeah. given 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 how na our national has uh, has fared generally. Sure. Yeah. In terms of what our front page is going to be on Monday, it's one, it's one of the few days uh, of, of the year when we have the luxury of a day to think about yeah, it, yeah, yeah, uh, right. because yeah. we don't publish on a Sunday, yeah. and so, so we can actually wait and see yeah. what the results come in. Yeah. But I'd be very surprised if uh, Winston Peters doesn't feature sure. on the front page in some, some reasonably strong way. Mm. Um, obviously, uh, uh, you know, new uh, if uh, uh, provided uh, David Clark uh, continues mm -hmm. um, along the way, I mean, he, he might get a wee look in as, mm -hmm. as, as introducing a, a new MP. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, we will look at the um, you know the party votes and mm. and what's happened to those and uh, how that the, the balance of sort of mm. uh, allegiances is potentially shifted sure. and whether that's greater or or le lesser than than the national situation. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And in terms of uh, New Zealand First, which is perhaps the the un, you know, the secondary story. I mean, I think still the leading story is. National is doing very well, and you know how exactly they're getting into government. The second story is, you know, Winston. You know, he did it again, as it were. Where do you think that came from? You know, what, what we were asking everyone this. What, what's your view on the rebirth of Winston? How did it happen? I, I think the the whole uh, Tea Party schmoz yeah. had a reasonable amount to do with it. I think mm -hmm. there was a there, there was for a week. Uh, the best part of a week, there was basically a vacuum mm -hmm. in terms of. Um, analysis, policy, yep. uh, debate, etc. Every while everybody focused on what was essentially a distraction. Sure. Um, you know, the very interesting and uh, important um, parts of that mm -hmm. distraction, um, important um, issues to mm -hmm. be teased out. Um, so uh, I'm not particularly criticising people who did seriously look at mm -hmm. what it meant, but. The fact is that there was a vacuum, and it allowed uh, Winston Peters to to take centre mm. ground and centre stage. Mm. And you know, he he is a, a veteran politician. Mm. He is a he's a mm. charming individual. Mm. Uh, he's there's a touch of the in that respect a touch of the John Key about sure. him. And we have moved to uh, very presidential mm. styles of. Um, of elections, so mm. it's not so much about the policies; it's mm. about uh, it's about the person, and in a way that mirrors our whole television culture. In a yeah. way, it's a celebrity culture yeah. as much as it is mm. anything else. We, sure. you know, we haven't in this campaign seen, uh, you know, a group of experts um, sit down and grill mm. um, the leader, the deputy leader, the finance yeah, minister, and and sort of take them, really put them on the spot with their policies. That just seems to be absent from, from the visual presentation or electronic presentation of our, of our um, um, uh, election campaigns. It's, it's all about um, you know, the, the charm and affability mm. of, of the various leaders. Mm. Going back to the tea tapes, because yeah. they were you know, the thing that just blew up in the middle of this and goodness knows where it came from and so on. From a media ethics perspective, put aside the legality of them, yep. but from a media ethics perspective, if someone affiliated with the ODT had turned up with this tape explaining that they came about it by the accidental leaving of a recorder in a private, would you have printed it? Ooh, uh, difficult to answer a hypothetical yeah, like that. Sure. We would have to... Um... Well, give us some, give us some, because the Herald on Sunday, the day when it first said... This, we've got this tape. Their take was, we believe on legal grounds we could publish it, but ethically we've decided not to. Mm. Give us some insight into the actual thinking that goes on to that kind of decision. 
Well, uh, it, it's, it's a, a difficult one, really. Um, I mean, legally, you're, you're, you're not allowed to tape anyone without their knowledge sure. and then use that material. Sure. So, you know, ethics and legality are very closely related in, 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 these, in these respects. And so while, you know, you'd argue about whether something was on the record or off the record or whether, um, whether the, the politicians, John Banks and John Key, had made it clear, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely clear, that they didn't want anything they were yeah. saying taped. And, you know, there's a good argument that if, if, if they were really that concerned about yeah. it, why didn't they clear the whole cafe yeah, out, yeah, yeah. you know? Um, because it wasn't um, their cafe. That's probably a good answer. But yeah. Well, oh, no, yeah, exactly. What are they exactly. doing in a cafe exactly. in the first place? Yeah, they quite. want to have a private conversation. Quite. So, sure. Sure. you know, there, there are many and good issues to be teased out yeah. of that. Um, it's very difficult to answer your hypothetical sure. without actually um, uh, having, a, you know, knowing precisely the circumstances. Yeah, if, yeah. If, if a microphone had been left on the table and it was obvious... Um, and nobody batted away, and it was simply the National Party minders who said, off you go now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you would be well within your rights to right. publish it, but, you know, one would have to go back and just, just yeah, yeah. see precisely yeah. what was said mm. in terms of... So the point being that people who are decrying the Herald on Sunday for caving and being, you know, not putting out in the public interest what everyone ought to know, it's more complicated than that, isn't it?